revered principal sir, secretary ma'am, our most valued dear Pranav A. Shura and his respected relatives, parents, grandmother and the young kid, a warm good morning to you all. It gives me immense pleasure to read out the profile of Mr. Pranav A. Shura with a special reference to his scholastic and co curricular accomplishments. Grade 12, 2020-14, admitted to undergraduate program at Stanford University. Acceptance rate to Stanford in 2014 was only 5%, the lowest of any U.S. university ever. Scored 43 out of 45 points in the International Faculty of the Writing a book on combined topics for students preparing for the International Math Olympiad qualified in the Journal Information Metrics Olympiad, charting on ZIO 2030. Grade 11, 2012 30, ranked 8 in India in the IMO team selection camps held in Mumbai in May 2030 was one of 40 students across the world selected to attend the prestigious Stanford University Mathematics Camp held at Stanford University in July August 2013. It took a distinction in Trinity Communication Skills Grade 6, scored 2350 on the SAT and 237 on PSAT. It took 40 out of 42. IV points in grade 11, including 7 in all HL subjects, that is mathematics, physics, and chemistry. Grade 10, 2011 to 12, ranked first in Karnataka, the Karnataka Regional Mathematics Olympiad for the second year in a row, and won the most 30 students nationwide who qualified in the national Indian National Mathematics Olympiad, I and O. School, CCPA. 10 upon 10 in the CBC class 10 standard board examination. Big round of applause, please. Great time, 2017 Appointed associate school captain at CEAR, the second highest student leadership position. Ranked first in India in the ASSET examination for the second consecutive year. ASSET is a grade wise exam in math, English, and science conducted annually by educational initiatives. Ranked first in Karnataka, in the Karnataka Regional Olympiad, competing against the students up to grade 12. He was the only ninth grader to make it to the top 30 in the state. Ranked 27th in India in the Fitch Challenge Reward Examination, conducted annually by Fitch. FDRE is a grade-wise, national-wide exam on mathematics, science, and IQ. Grade 8, 2009 today, awarded the school blue medal given annually to the best overall sportsmanship in year school for excellence in athletics, basketball, chess, and table tennis. Awarded the prestigious National Challenge Research Examination Scholarship by the National Council of Educational Research and Training, India. Ranked 15th in Karnataka, in the Karnataka Regional Mathematics Olympiad, the only grade 8 student to qualify. Ranked first in India in ASSET examination, conducted annually by Education Initiatives. Ranked 17th in India in the FIIT Lazy Talent Reward examination, conducted annually by FIIT Lazy E. Ranked 49th. Internationally, in the Mathematics Olympiad selected by Science Olympiad Foundation. Grade 7, 2008-9, ranked among the top 10 in India in ASSH examination. Ranked 40 internationally in the Mathematics Olympiad conducted by Science Olympiad Foundation. Class 6, 2007-8, ranked 31st internationally in the Mathematics Olympiad conducted by Science Olympiad Foundation. Composed rock songs, including writing lyrics, setting them to music, playing the keyboards. You have been searched. My, my soul, Sri Ram, reflections 
in the www.youtube.com. Learning Western classical piano since 2003 and Hindustani vocal music since 2009. FIDE rated chess player, member of CEA Resolution Public Apology. Thank you. A big applause, please. Thank you. 
they do it for him. And then he comes across it. And it's half of what's left, leaving the other half for me. Right? So he's the quarter, and now there's a quarter left. And now I eat half of that and leave the rest for him. And then he eats half of what's remaining, and so on. Right? So the question is, as eventually, like, I mean, after this process goes on and on, there'll only be like a tiny crumb left, so that's a negligible quantity of the cake left. So the question is, at the end of all of this, how much of the cake would I eat, and how much of the cake would you eat?
A lot of challenging problems require you to keep things in a way that you haven't stopped before. When you have a conference like some of it's good to write them down and have an energy for it. So any trick you see that's a fusion of stuff for all and you think that, oh my god, I would, I would never have thought of that. It's just jot it down and so you can come back to it later and it's something that you can use in the future. The next is to focus on fundamentals. This is particularly directed to students in higher classes. So those of you in 8th, 9th, 10th grade who are preparing for your board exams, right? A lot of, a lot of times you find yourself just studying a chapter and like you do a lot of say, trigonometry problems, or a lot of problems of linear equations, and but you won't find yourself getting much better. Like whenever you come to new problems, you still get stuck. And that might be because your fundamental needs to improve, right? Like, if you have difficulty adding fractions, or if you have difficulty dividing fractions, if you don't, uh, if you don't really understand the base of how a chapter works, like solving linear equations in two variables, for example, if you don't, if you're just going through the steps, like, you know, multiply this and subtract that and get the answer, but not understanding what's going on, then you'll never really get better at the chapter. So sometimes you need to go back, go back a few years, go, Go to the sixth grade textbook and go through concepts there and see if you can do everything mentally, right? Like questions on the bottom, so like just um, you know, like simple interest and stuff like that that you may have gotten a little rusty at. And what what if you keep trying to build up, like if you keep trying to build higher and higher stories of a building, the foundation is weak, eventually the whole thing is going to collapse. So sometimes you need to come down from your tenth grade level. And you know, go back to like fifth, sixth, seventh grade concepts and see if you're still doing it. Alright? And um, the final thing is challenge yourself. Um, never, never just get, never be content with just, you know, solving the few exercises the teacher gives you at the end of a class, right? If, I mean, everyone's doing the same exercise. If you want to set yourself apart, you need to go for extra challenges. You can ask your teacher, you know, I finished all the homework you gave me, and I want some extra challenging problems. I know, like, it might not sound like much fun. I can't picture, like, most people doing that. But in the long run, it will really help if you push yourself. Challenge yourself and look forward to challenges. Um, like, I tell a lot of my friends who um, were sort of scared of hard math, right? I tell them, once you learn to like the subject, you don't actually want it to be harder. You only think, please don't do, give me hard problems, please give me easy problems. You'll be saying, you know what, easy problems are boring, I want to do something more challenging. So, learn to like challenges. Um, so, at this point, I'm going to pause. Does anyone have any questions about anything I've said so far? Or any questions from me in general? Thank you. 
that the simple equation that I saw in the board. So this is the initial state you get. This is what you get after you simplify it. And this is the final answer you get. Right? You can see a logical progression. If I had written it the other way, like if I had written x plus 2x equals 1 here, then 3x equals 1 over here, then x equals 1 by 3 over there, it would look very confusing. So, so you basically need to have your ideas organized in a logical manner in order to get marked and be clear in general. Does that answer your question? Any other questions? How to prepare for exams? Okay, well, so the main thing about preparing for an exam is it shouldn't happen at the last minute. It shouldn't, you shouldn't actually be preparing for the exam. Like, if you're preparing for the exam, it should be what you do every day. And it's not like, you know, you sit through class the whole year and two days before an exam, open your book, and you do a lot of exam preparation, right? On a daily basis, whatever you learn, make sure you are, make sure you understand it, make sure you practice it. And when you do that, you automatically be ready for the exam. So, yeah, the key message is consistency. You need to work on a regular basis and not save it all off for the exam. And of course, these make notes, focus on fundamentals, challenge yourself, do the three things you should do as well. On a regular basis. Any other questions? Yeah. I'll uh, have to look back. I'll come to you right now. Just at the back. How to increase My name is Gloria and Sandra is the last one. Okay, so that's a very good question. How do you create your interest in math? Um, so, the one thing I would suggest is when you're learning a new concept, right? Say you're in class test, so you probably learn trigonometry. Okay. So, when you learn trigonometry, right? What do you learn in class? You learn what time is, you know what class is, you learn like what the function means, you know, some, you learn some identities, right? But um, you should always ask, why should I learn this, right? What are the applications of this? And when you, the minute you start asking, like, what are the applications of what I'm learning? How is it connected to the real world, right? You'll find a lot of interesting connections. If you're interested in art, you'll find connections between trigonometry and art. If you're interested in astrophysics, like, if you're interested in just looking at the sky and the stars, you'll find that there's a lot of trigonometry used by astronomers to say calculate the distance between the sun and the earth. So if you ask a lot of questions about how things are connected, you'll find that almost anything you're interested in, right? From music to looking at the sky to playing sports, there's math everywhere. And if you're learning statistics, you can you can go and look at a bunch of cricket statistics and learn how how people like go look at them look for statistics. And that's and that's the best way to learn about it how to calculate averages or how to calculate mean, median, and mode, right? If you're learning about the trigonometry, what I said, if you're learning about probability, go look at, again, sports is a great example where probability has a lot of applications. So the main thing to do is look at how math is connected to what you're interested in. And then you start becoming interested. Then you start wanting to learn more about the topic and your right? So, Tell me, tell me something you're interested in. I'll try to find a connection. Tell me something you're Okay, so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of science and chemistry. So for example, 
Thank you. 